It's the best time of the year. Earth Day, birthday. Many of you know it is Earth Day. I know it is Earth Week. Some uh, schools actually take it to the extent of Earth Month. You can never bring too much attention to the planet. So over the last 27 years, I'm going to share several of my favorite activities that I've incorporated into my classroom and worked with the students on. Um, there's a bunch of different ideas, and I'm going to start with as simple as possible that you can basically implement in, in kindergarten class and go all the way up to some of the most complex tasks you can do, like uh, calculating out carbon footprints for high school math teachers. So I'm going to share several ideas. I hope they help, and I hope you enjoy your Earth Day birthday. And yes, that is Dr. Jane Goodall spending the day out with my students at Disney's Animal Kingdom back in 2000. We had uh, done enough service learning activities in my class that we caught the eye of Roots and Shoots and Dr. Jane Goodall. And in this picture, you can see her walking around with Chris Bird, who actually became very, very close friends with her over the course of his life. So uh, kick back, enjoy, fast forward to the things that you think will uh, be interesting to you. Like I said, we'll start off very, very simple, and then we'll move up to some very, very advanced things. Thanks for your time. Here is a list of several of the ideas I'm going to cover. Many of these I've incorporated into my classroom, and I'm going to share pictures and uh, what we did to incorporate them. Other ones are ideas that I think can be incorporated. So kick back, enjoy, and I'll go into more detail right now. This is really, really cool. This is actually what I gave my nieces and nephews for Christmas. Is In the old days, you could donate money to conservation, and they would send you a little picture of the manatee or the dolphin that you were uh, that you had adopted. Nowadays, you can actually adopt turtles, sharks, elephants, and lots of other animals where they actually have tagged them and give you the GPS coordinates. So you can actually track your animal on the internet. And now you can incorporate math, mapping, GPS coordinates, science, life cycles of animals, all of these things into your classroom, while also uh, paying homage to Earth Day. So great idea. Um, there are lots of companies that do this. Just go onto the internet type in adopt a sea turtle, adopt an elephant, adopt a shark, whatever it is that you want to adopt for your classroom. Maybe you guys can have a little vote as to what you want to adopt. Um, and usually, just make sure that the company you're working with is reputable. Usually the companies donate a good portion, if not all of that money, to conservation to that particular animal. So kick back, enjoy, and go out there and uh, save Flipper. This next um, idea can be used at any level from kindergarten all the way up to advanced placement high school courses. It is so cool. You can actually go online and order, uh, order grow a plant kits where you can purchase seeds and auger and it allows you to actually, when you plant the seed, you'll see the uh, roots sprout it's clear so you can actually watch them grow and even to this day after teaching this for 27 years it is still so cool to plant a seed watch the roots grow and watch the uh, the plant actually sprout so that's one activity you can do another one i remember from my own elementary school is um, we had a teacher who took uh, paper cups put soil in them and then you planted uh, beans into each of them and when the bean sprouted, um, you actually took it home and you had a plant to uh, to grow and uh, a bean to eat if it actually got to that point. But I really, really love the idea of incorporating uh, a lesson about pollinators here as well. So you can go on to TED Talks and there's a couple of really, really nice videos about the importance of pollinators and the issues facing them, such as colony collapse. If you go into TEDx, and you type in colony collapse, there's a couple really, really good videos that talk about how even students can help save pollinators and the importance to them of pollinators to the economy, to the environment, and what students can do to help. So I love the idea of taking paper cups, planting flower seeds in them, 
letting the students watch them sprout, take them home, and uh, planting them at home to help uh, provide food for the bees. So it's an opportunity for even young kids to feel like they're making a difference and actually having them make a difference. So uh, go out there and help those kids save the bees. Be a hero. You get it? Be a hero. I'm here. I'm here for the rest of the video. This one works with both Earth Day and Arbor Day. Um, there are plenty of organizations who will donate a tree or send somebody out to your, your uh, school to plant a tree and allow the students to assist them with this. So um, relatively generic, very easy, and you can bring experts out to work with you on it. So another idea for you, plant a tree. This is something that can be done with all levels, ranging from kindergarten to advanced placement classes in high school. I've had some really, really cool experiences working with students on this. So what I typically do is allow them to write songs, poetry, stories, whatever it is that they want to do to talk about the earth. And then I give them extra credit for completing those things. And you can figure out what extra credit works for you. Typically, what I do is allow them to earn one point per line. And then if they work in a group, I divide those points uh, among however many people are in the group. So um, if they have 60 lines and there's three of them, each of them gets 20 points. Now, I will double those points if they read the song, the poetry, or the story and I triple the points if they actually perform it. And I've actually had students break out guitars. Uh, had some really, really cool experiences with some incredible songs that have been written and performed in class by the students. So really, really cool. Uh, we also, uh, our school, we have a national championship dance team and the uh, girls came in to me ahead of time and they said, Mr. Cole, we wanna do an interpretive dance and I'm like triple points. I just need to understand uh, exactly what you're doing. And we work something out. And it was really, really cool. They performed a water cycle dance and uh, uh, the five of them divided up their points. So uh, like I said, for me, typically I give one point per line for uh, writing it, two points per line for reading it, and three points per line if they uh, perform it. And it will blow your mind what they will come up with. Have fun with it and enjoy. I think everyone has a pretty good idea of this one, which is a good old fashioned campus cleanup, beautify the campus and protect the earth. So just make sure that when you take the students out there to beautify your campus, you put some gloves on them and give them some tools to pick up the trash so they're not uh, exposing themselves to anything and uh, go out there and uh, beautify the campus. Want to keep your work to a minimum? Uh, bring in some guest speakers. There are plenty of organizations and experts out there who will come in and talk to your students about Earth Day and Earth Day issues. This particular picture right here is of a gentleman from Seminole County Public Lands. Uh, Jim Duby used to come in and talk to the students about uh, the environment, and he would also bring lots of cool creatures with him. He would bring snakes. He'd bring skulls for the uh, students to examine. This is a picture from a field trip we did with him, but every year we brought Jim in and he was a very, very exciting guest speaker. It's a great way to involve uh, community stakeholders, get them into your classroom, let them meet your students and uh, enjoy. Another thing you can do that is really, really cool is get them out of the classroom and take them on a field trip. Take them to some place like the zoo, a state park, a museum. On the picture on the left there, you actually see uh, Navia Sharma out at Lyonia Preserve. Really, really cool place. The Florida scrub jays are so uh, friendly, they actually fly down and interact with the people. In this particular case, Navia gets a big surprise when a scrub jay lands on her head. In the middle there, you can see two of the other field trips where I've taken the uh, students out into natural areas. The top is uh, the Seminole County public school mud walk. We were out there repairing it after some tornadoes. And on the bottom there, there's a trip, field trip out to Chuliota. So anytime you can get students out on a field trip to 
uh, enjoy and interact with Mother Nature. That is the absolute best teaching experience you can provide them. So uh, set up some special field trips. If you go, if you're in Central Florida, think about Lyonia Preserve. If you're within driving distance of it, where they have uh, just an absolutely fantastic museum where you can uh, uh, see live animals. You can see the uh, pollinator garden they've put together. Uh, they actually build little bee houses if you want that you can uh, build with the students and let them take home and put out there for the pollinators. And uh, what they're most famous for are their friendly scrub jays that will actually fly down and interact with the students. So uh, some ideas for you, get them out of the classroom, get them out into nature. Unable to take the students out on a field trip, unable to visit a museum or a zoo, bring a, science to, a scientist to you. A lot of us still have um, the remote learning tools left over from COVID. One of the things that I do with my students is I set up conference calls with uh, scientists and uh, a lot of times I'll set up uh, conference calls with um, community leaders discussing the Florida scrub jay and trying to designate it as the state bird. In this picture, you can see that the students have set up a conference call with uh, FWC Chairman Rodney Barreto, pitching them on this Florida scrub jay, trying to get FWC to endorse it. So use the technology, especially that stuff that is left over from COVID, to where you can set up a teleconference call with a scientist. Uh, again, easy peasy, a chance to bring community leaders and decision makers and stakeholders into your classroom and uh, teach the students how to uh, properly handle a pre conference call. This can be done at any level, but it is intensive and it means you're going to go all out. Every year, one of our local middle schools hosted an Earth Day event where they invited uh, basically speakers and community members from all around the county to set up booths and talk to the uh, uh, to schools from all around the county. Schools from the around, around the county would bus students over there, especially the middle schools, to learn about Earth Day and uh, all of our resources. And each year they would ask us, my high school students, to set up a booth and talk to the middle school uh, students across the uh, county as they attended the event. So um, you can host an event invite community members, stakeholders, uh, museums, zoos, anybody who will come and set up a booth and talk about their uh, particular expertise. And again, in this picture, you can see my students there educating uh, middle schoolers about uh, several of the animals that we had in the classroom. It is always a great event, very, very popular. It can be done at any level, but it is intensive and requires a lot of organizational skills. Um, have fun. Again, this is another one that's fairly generic that can be done at any level, but host a poster contest, a photography contest, a poetry contest, some sort of a contest where you give uh, little trophies or prizes away at the end. All right, there's a lot of things you can do with this one when you talk about recycled art, recycled jewelry. Um, I've even uh, had teachers uh, talk about doing recycled fashion events. One of our Current teachers actually had a fashion show with recycled products. So in the lower left over there um, is a phone, phone book recycle drive. A lot of people watching this have probably never even used or seen a phone book, but back in the old days before the internet, we actually uh, used up a lot of paper and cut down a lot of trees to uh, make phone books. Uh, you know what phone books make is great paper mache. So uh, in the upper left, you can see for one of the projects that we had, uh, this particular student actually made a paper mache shark. And to tell you the impact that this kind of learning has on students, to this day, probably, I don't know, about uh, 20 years later, uh, he still talks about that paper mache shark. So uh, I know that he and his uh, group put a lot of uh, time into it. So. Um, anytime you can make recycled art, it's uh, going to be a hit with the students. So for Earth Day, another great project is make some recycled art, recycled jewelry. I think with recycled jewelry, you could have a lot of fun. Uh, my wife does a lot with sea glass and um, 
Uh, so you're actually picking up trash out of the ocean and turning it into art. And then, um, uh, like I said, you could even do a recycled uh, fashion event. Um, I've not tried that, but I would think with the right teacher and the right students, you could have just an epic event. This is very, very important with this particular activity. You need to verify that you don't have any students who have peanut butter allergies or peanut allergies. So with pine cone bird feeders, you're going to either collect or purchase pine cones. Take the pine cones, tie a string around the top of them, then load them up with peanut butter. Take the uh, pine cone that's loaded up with peanut butter and roll it around in bird seed and then cover it with bird seed and pack it in there good. After the student is done with that, have them put it in a plastic bag. You're going to need to take some plastic bags into the classroom so that they don't get peanut butter and bird seed all over the place. These can be messy. So the goal here is to make a pine cone bird feeder that the student can take home, hang on a tree and watch birds come to uh, the tree to feed. Again, very important, make sure you don't have anybody with peanut butter allergies or peanut allergies. Uh, load up the pine cone with uh, peanut butter, roll it in bird seed, pack it in there, put it in a plastic bag, and then let the students take it home. There are plenty of uh, do-it-yourself videos on the internet. Just type in pine, how to make a pine cone bird feeder and have a lot of fun. This is always a huge uh, crowd pleaser with the students. You are looking at some of the crafts that my wife does. Basically, um, she goes out and collects seashells. We do that together and turn them into art. You can do the same thing with your students, which is you can create an activity where the students are making art out of seashells. In the lower left, you can see my wife makes Christmas trees out of seashells. She's taken and uh, collected a bunch of scallops and put a little starfish on top of them. She actually sells these uh, at art shows. So you're actually teaching the student a potential trade if they uh, eventually want to get involved with something like this. On the upper left, she has uh, created a wind chime out of sea glass. So this is really cool in the sense that you have taken a pollutant out of the ocean, you're collecting sea glass and taking it out of the ocean so it doesn't get munched on by a sea turtle or something, and turning it into something beautiful and something useful. And in the upper left, you can also see she's taken some sea glass and turned it into keychains with little sea creatures on it. These are all things that students are capable of doing. They can uh, take sea glass and turn it into art. They can take shells and turn it into art. Another thing that is popular is uh, for little kids to take uh, seashells and turn them into little creatures. You can uh, Google it on the internet and take a look and see, I'd, I'd basically type in and Google uh, shell art. And um, I know when I was little, I would take sea, uh, seashells and I would turn them into little creatures, turn them into turtles and stuff. And what you do is you basically glue the seashells together if you do this, you're definitely going to want a lot of little kittens paws because kittens paws make great feet when you're making these little sea creatures and your uh, your little ones will have a lot of fun. So if you've got elementary school kids, obviously they're probably not going to have the patience or dexterity to create the things in this picture, but they can take some glue and seashells and put them together and make themselves a sea creature. Have fun. Enjoy doing it. Let me know how they turn out. One of the cool things about living in Florida is you're never very far from the beach. So a lot of times my wife and I will go out and actually collect sand dollars and we'll spend three, four five days uh, a year out at St. Pete Beach collecting sand dollars so that I can bring them into the classroom. Now, this is very, very important. When you're collecting sand dollars, you must make sure you have deceased sand dollars. It completely defeats the purpose of being a good environmental steward if you're taking live sand dollars. And it, it's a cruel way for the poor little sand dollars to die. So you're only collecting the white ones or the light brown ones or gray ones that are absolutely smooth and you're sure there's no sign of life. When in doubt, put it back in the water. Once you collect them, my wife typically uh, puts them in a 50-50 
water to bleach ratio for about 10 minutes. Um, let me actually back backtrack that for a second. She'll put them in um, just regular fresh water for a little while, try to rinse the sand out of them. So she takes it in the water. As she said, her, her term was swishes them through the water until she gets as much sand out as possible. Then she puts them in a 50-50 water to bleach ratio for about 10 minutes. The longer they're in that bleach to water ratio, the more fragile they become. Then she takes the sand dollar out of that 50-50 ratio of water to bleach and um, lets them dry. And there's one final step she goes through, which she, she takes the sand dollar and she now paints it with a 50-50 Elmer's glue to water ratio. So it's 50-50 uh, half water, half Elmer's glue paste that she puts on them. Once you get it to that point and let it dry, you now have a sand dollar that students can paint. If you don't have easy access to sand dollars, you can always purchase them. And then a lot of this is already done. They're probably bleached or probably clean. And all you need to do is put the 50-50 Elmer's glue to water ratio on them. But if you're collecting them from the wild, again, make sure they're deceased, rinse them in fresh water, then a 50-50 bleach to water ratio, and then paint them with a 50-50 Elmer's glue to water ratio. Once you get to that point, you can take them into the classroom, let the students uh, paint them. I always tell the students they make great Christmas ornaments and they make great Mother's and Father's Day gifts. I always tell the students, look, this is an inexpensive way to make mom happy for Mother's Day. Because she, you know, I, I work with high schoolers, so these are high schoolers and uh, that are actually making crafts for their parents, which, again, goes over in a big way. You can see some of the work the students have done at the bottom of the screen. Those are some of the ornaments that they've done. I had one girl, I saw her in the uh, supermarket the other day, and she said she was making uh, ornaments for her uh, friends, and they were hanging them from their cars, from the, uh, the mirror in their car. So uh, this is a great uh, activity if you're looking for something uh, for Earth Day. Anybody who knows me knows no presentation is complete without multiple references to the Florida scrub chain. So eight days ago, I was at the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's uh, Florida Scrub Jay Festival in Jupiter, Florida. And when I stopped by the FWC booth, they had multiple copies of bird checklists for the state of Florida and butterfly checklists for the state of Florida. And what these little checklists are, basically it's uh, starting people with their life list, a list of the different birds and butterflies found in the state. I'm sure that all states have something equivalent to FWC. So if you have interest, uh, contact, if you're in Florida, contact FWC, ask them for a classroom set, or if you have multiple classes, enough uh, booklets to cover your entire uh, group of classes and then hand them out to the students and take them for a walk around campus and get them started on their life list. So this is a great activity for Earth Day is order yourself a bunch of booklets, uh, take the students for a walk, get them to start checking off the birds on their checklist, and hopefully this is something that carries over further into their lifetime. Get them started early on those life lists. So again, you can reach out to FWC and uh, ask them for the uh, state of Florida bird checklist or butterfly checklist. And if you're not in the state of Florida, you can go to uh, whatever your uh, corresponding agency is that uh, has those types of lists and go from there. Most of the activities I've talked about so far can be covered in one class period or one day. A few of them may take longer. And some of the ones that I'm going to talk about in the near future uh, you might be able to cover in one class period. But the next couple of slides I'm going to talk about involve uh, multiple days. Uh, it can be weeks. It, it can be days. It can be weeks. It can be a full month. And there are some teachers and some people who believe that uh, it should be Earth Week and not Earth Day or even Earth Month and not Earth Day. So I'm going to share some, uh, some of the things I've done in the past, typically I celebrated as Earth Week, and I have multiple activities, and I'm going to talk to you about those right now. Back in 2002, my students and I decided that one day was not enough to celebrate the Earth. We decided to create Earth Week, 
And what we did is we made it a school-wide event. We tried to get everybody involved. Each day, there was a trivia question asked during the announcements, and any student who answered the trivia questions correctly ended up uh, being invited to a special assembly uh, on that Friday. We also, we also invited several classes to join us on that Friday. And the organization that we partnered with, uh, we raised some grant money, we got some grant money to pay for it, and they brought in all sorts of really, really cool animals. They brought in, uh, you can see in the article, there's a kangaroo, some monkeys, uh, Kodiak bears, wolf cubs, tiger cubs, a chimpanzee, lemurs. It was one of the coolest presentations I've ever been a part of. So again, what we did is we made it Earth Week. All week long, we asked random trivia questions on the announcements. The students would turn their answers in. They would cut, be sent to our classroom. I, once they got credit for getting a question correct, I gave them an invite to the presentation. And I invited uh, several classes down to join us as well. We wanted to make it a school-wide event. And then the uh, organization we partnered with, uh, the Amazing Animals Affection Training uh, Organization, actually did a great job of uh, promoting conservation, talking about each animal and how the habitats of the, ha the animals are disappearing. And it put a name and a face on all of the animals so that it actually had more impact on the students. Again, the way I did this was by getting uh, some grant money to pay for this. You could also do some sort of a fundraiser, but bring the zoo to you. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about that on the next slide. Talk about impact. This is really, really cool. That is a wolf cub that we brought in in 1998. Uh, and again, that is my students in the blue shirt with the, uh, the handler uh, showing her the wolf cub. So these are things you can do to have incredible impact on these students. She'll remember that experience for the rest of her life, along with several of the other things that we've done together. But I've brought zoos and uh, animal handlers into the classroom over the years in many different capacities. In this particular instance, uh, that was a school-wide presentation that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I think I said it was 2002. According to my slide right here, I was incorrect and it was actually 1998. Um, again, maybe. <laughs> it's been a long time. So it's uh, somewhere between 98 and 2002. We had uh, a school wide presentation that had all sorts of cool things. But over the years, we've also had uh, where I've done school wide presentations. I've done uh, countywide presentations uh, like the uh, middle school event I talked about earlier. And sometimes I'll just keep it to my classroom. I'll uh, raise some money and just bring uh, the handlers into my uh, classroom to interact with the students in a small group setting and uh, uh, hand those students passes for, let's say I'm going to bring them in for just sixth and seventh. Again, those students who do whatever they're supposed to do to earn a pass we'll get one of those passes to come visit us during 6th and 7th and uh, participate in that way. So again, bring, the, uh, bring nature to your classroom, bring the zoo to your classroom, bring experts in uh, who handle animals and stuff. Put a name and a face on conservation. A kid is going to be a lot more impacted when they get to actually sit down and pet a wolf than reading about one in a book. It's very, very powerful and a great way to really bring things home during Earth Day. Okay, we're starting to get into some fairly sophisticated things. This one right here is really, really cool. I partnered with a drafting teacher, a biology teacher, and a chemistry teacher to win Disney Teacherific uh, back in 2003, and we did it with a project called Going Batty. Now here's the backstory on this, is that my first week teaching, day number three, and I'm gonna to link to this if you wanna watch the video on it. If you ever think you had a really tough first week of teaching, click on my link and listen to what happened to me my first week of teaching. We actually had a student at uh, the high school pick up a bat and get bitten by it. And uh, that first week of teaching, we were in the, uh, 
in the newspaper for a bat attack. <laughs> so, so it was it was brutal. Uh, like I said, if you're bored and you want to hear some funny stories, listen to my first week of teaching. But we turned it around. It, um, having gone through that, we learned all the benefits that bats provide, which is that they eat up to 600 mosquitoes an hour. They're incredibly useful uh, creatures. And so I partnered with a drafting teacher, a chemistry teacher, a biology teacher, and we put together an entire presentation that we went around to the elementary school and middle schools, teaching them the benefits of bats, the ecological importance of them in the environment, how they eat mosquitoes and talk to them a little about IPM, integrated pest management. So uh, that was really cool. And we built bat houses that we uh, put up around campus and we distributed to other schools to encourage bats to make homes at the schools for integrated pest management to knock down the mosquito population. Now, this is fairly sophisticated because now you're talking about needing to uh, come up with some money for wood, having somebody who's talented with a drafting background or who can actually cut the wood and build the bat houses, having the students assemble the bat houses, and then learning the proper way to put the bat houses uh, out so that the bats can use them and not get eaten by predators. So there's, it's a very sophisticated project. Again, this is one of the reasons I think it earned a Disney Teacherific Award was it's not something you can just do in a day. It probably took us a month to put together the presentation that we sent out to the middle schools and the elementary schools and to build the bat houses. And again, there was a lot of integrated a curriculum where we had a lot of team teaching going on so really really cool project but involves a lot of math a lot of drafting a lot of hands-on activities so you can do this with bat houses you could do it with bird feeders you could do it with uh, bird houses uh, there's a whole host of things but now we're talking about earth month um, again if you have the time and the flexibility in your curriculum definitely worth uh, doing and the students will remember it for a long time and again there's a lot of integrated curriculum they're going to learn multiple subjects and uh, again very enjoyable just one point of clarification which is when I use the term we as to going out to the elementary schools and middle schools and uh, teaching the elementary school and middle school students about bats about bat houses about integrated pest management. When I say we, that was really the students. My students were going out, my high school students were going out and teaching and educating younger students about the issue. You can incorporate Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month into just about any subject matter or any grade. If you're in civics or social studies and you want to incorporate it, talk about environmental laws, talk about environmental treaties. Are they working? Debate the issue with the students. In a situation like that, I love to take the, uh, the other side of it. I know that most of my students are very strong on conservation, and then I will uh, take the other side of the debate and uh, help them to... Uh, really take a look at both sides of the issue so that they can argue whichever side they need to argue. This particular issue is relevant to any class, but especially math. If you're a math teacher and you want to incorporate Earth Day into your curriculum, have your students calculate out their carbon footprint. There are plenty of uh, websites you can use to do this. And uh, it's a great way to incorporate Earth Day into math. Want to incorporate Earth Day into economics? Talk about carbon tax. There's a movie, uh, Before the Flood, where towards the end of the movie, there's a, I believe he's with Harvard, a Harvard professor who talks about carbon tax and how it can nudge people into making the right decisions as far as environmental impact. So want to uh, incorporate uh, Earth Day into economics? Discuss the carbon tax. You can do this one in a day, uh, probably with middle school or high school. Basically what we did is we partnered with St. John's River Water Management and I took the students out 
and they gave us a stencil and each of the storm drains we came to we actually spray painted do not dump drains to the lake at each of these so it was a stenciling project uh, another opportunity to uh, do something constructive for earth day uh, get them outside the classroom teach them that uh, what watersheds are and that what we do on our streets and in our parking lots eventually ends up in the lake if i had to pick one single activity that has had the most impact on my students and myself, it is this. Back in 1999 and 2000, we wrote letters to our legislators asking them to support a bill to name the Florida scrub jay the Florida state bird. And the rest is history. Uh, it's been a 27 year ride and the students have learned so much from that. I would say, it's had the most impact of any teaching activity I've been involved with. So I'm gonna put a link to integrating civics into your curriculum. If you decide you wanna write your legislators, there are some absolutely important points you need to know, I'll give you one of them. Anytime you write a legislator, that becomes public record. So you're gonna have your, stu your students leave their last name off, uh, probably just first name, last initial, um, so that they're not getting emails from people opposed to the issue. So again, this has had the most impact of any issue or any activity I've uh, been involved with in my career. Uh, I've made every mistake possible, learn from my mistakes, and watch the video if you're going to go this route. But it's impactful and definitely worth doing. You might want to take some time on Earth Day and write your legislators to ask them to support whatever environmental issues your class is interested in. Uh, on the left is one of the proudest moments of my entire teaching career. Those students over there actually got the Florida uh, scrub jay designated as the official bird of Seminole County. So I always tell people that not only are my students reading history, but they're making it. And that is so freaking cool. It's not even funny. That is impact folks. All right, we're getting ready to wrap this thing up because uh, I think I've given you some good ideas. Uh, in the comments section, let me know which ones you like, which ones you don't, and add your own. Uh, those ideas that you have you want to share with other teachers, put them in the comments section below. But one of my favorite things to do, and again, this has had a huge impact on my career, and it can't be understated, is ask the students for their ideas. A lot of the best ideas are student-driven and come from the students. Ask them what they want to do for Earth Day. Uh, run some of these ideas, buy them, maybe write them up on the board, have the students choose which ones they have interest in, maybe do multiple activities. Uh, ask them if they want to do an Earth Week or an Earth Month instead of an Earth Day. Get the students involved, get their buy-in and involve them in the decisions. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Happy Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month, whatever you're going to celebrate. I'd leave you with one last thought, which is this. I remember years ago, I guess it was probably 25, 26 years ago, I was in a, at an AP environmental science uh, training. And the person leading the training said, one of the most important things that we do is give the kids hope. So it's important that we take a moment and as dire and as bad as things gloomy as they look, we need to make sure that we leave the students with some hope that there is a good future for them ahead of them. And there is. It's one of those things where hopefully one of the students that we're working with, uh, we reach out to them and we get the momentum going in the right direction and get some of these things fixed. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Thanks for uh, being heroes to the students out there. Thanks for everything you do, teachers, and talk to you soon. Have a great Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month. Cole out.